Hello guys, Tav HD here and welcome back to another video and this is my 2012 Mac Mini. This is the quad core i7 2.3 GHz. It's not the build to order 2.6 but this is still a very nice machine. It has 16 GB of RAM and I have recently put an SSD into it so today what we will be doing is seeing if it can edit 4k video and i will be doing that inside of final cut pro and the video footage was filmed on the camera that i'm filming with now this is the panasonic lumix g7 now the main reason i'm doing this video is to test to see if i could use this computer to edit these youtube videos at the minute i use my 2015 retina macbook pro with the i7 in it and it does it absolutely fine no complaints but it's just annoying to keep plugging it into my monitors and drives all the time so it would be easier if i could just use this instead which is always plugged in now this is an older machine than my 2015 macbook pro but at this time there wasn't really too many performance differences with different years of Macs, so we're going to find out whether this one is comparable in any way when it comes to 4K editing. So to test this Mac Mini out, I will be using a previous video. It's one about the 2007 MacBook Pro. I've copied the project library onto this machine off my MacBook Pro, and we're just going to see how it goes. Okay, here we are. This is the desktop of the Mac Mini. I will bring up the specs here if you want to see those. So those are the specs of this machine. Now, I have, of course, dragged the project and the library onto this computer. We can simply just open that up. Now, this computer does only have the trial of Final Cut on it just for the purpose of this video, but I will install the full version if this goes well. So here are all the clips that I use for this video and let's just open the project. Here it is. Now the reason I chose this exact video is because it's quite similar to ones which I do quite often. I've got of course all the 4k clips, I've got a couple of overlays, I've got some text and effects and also some music. So it pretty much has it all and straight away you can see just by scrubbing through it's scrubbing very very responsively no lag there that is running very smoothly and if we look up here it's starting to render now so background rendering is on and i will keep it on for the sake of this video but for now let's just click play and see how this goes that's looking smooth that effect and that text let's just move it on a little bit that zoom seems to be working it's also playing the music track that's on there as well. Quite simply, this seems to be running pretty well. Of course, it is rendering in the background, but just looking at the clips playing, there doesn't seem to be any lag. Everything seems to be running just fine. And in case you're interested, it is on better performance. The quality and the media playback is on optimized slash original. That's how I have it on my MacBook Pro, so that's how I've kept it on here. And it looks like we're having no problems trying to play back this footage. So let's go further to the end where we've got some text and images that come on. And they seem to load just fine too. So in the timeline, this seems to be very responsive. I must say, just quickly scrubbing through all this, it doesn't seem any different to my Retina MacBook Pro. And if you bear in mind, this machine only cost me £250 with a boxed cinema display. I think that is pretty good so far. Now, what I'm going to do is, on the end here, I'm going to copy one of the clips and put it in at the end, just there. And on top of there, I will add a new text layer. I'm going to go for an animated one just to see how that goes. So let's drag that onto the top and looking at that preview that's running quite smoothly. So in here I'll just put this is a test. Let's now see how that plays back. 
So it hasn't rendered it yet, so it's looking fairly low quality, but the clip underneath it is still playing with hardly any dropped frames. It's a little bit slower than it should be, but considering it hasn't rendered it yet, I'm actually quite happy with that. And if you see those few dots there above where my cursor is, that means it is now going to render this part. So if we wait for it to do that, which it's now doing, rendering that quite quickly, which is nice. There we go, that has now finished rendering, took no time at all. Let's now play that. And it's playing that perfectly fine. I'm actually very happy with that. I'm going to cut that clip there and let's just put a cross dissolve on the end. Let's just see how that goes. And that plays absolutely fine. So I must say, just having a bit of a mess around, this seems to be performing very well. I'm actually quite impressed. This is now a nine year old computer, so this is impressing me quite a lot. When I'm zooming in and out, that's a bit laggy, but that's not really a problem. I don't really do much zooming in and out, I usually just leave it on a set thing like that and just scroll along and scrolling, it does that pretty much fine, no problems, really nothing that I can't live with. Now on this end clip here, I'm also going to add an effect, I am going to just choose something random, let's add a distortion effect, let's add earthquake, I've got no idea what this is, but let's add it and it looks like it has loaded and I'm guessing it will need to render, but let's just take a look. There we go, that is it so far. If we just wait for that to render, it will look better. So there we go, it's starting to render. Yet again, it's doing that quite quickly, so I wouldn't really have a problem just sitting and waiting for this to render so that I can play it back smoothly. I'm perfectly fine with waiting what is probably less than 30 seconds for that effect to load. And if you remember, this is 4K footage, so I am impressed. Let's now watch that. There we go, that's playing back just fine. I'm quite impressed with that. And of course, here is the entire timeline. This is a 20 minute video right there. Now, I think I'm going to export it and see how long that takes. Now, previously when I've done editing videos, I've kept the camera recording for the entire time. I'm not going to be able to do that this time because this is a more realistic, longer video it is realistically going to take quite a bit of time. If we bear in mind that the video is about 20 minutes, I would estimate that this would take at least double, so maybe 40 minutes to an hour. So I will make a note of the time when I export it, and then when it finishes, I will just say how long it took. I think that's going to be the best way to do this. So now let's take a look at the export settings I'm going to use. I'm going to do it as I would any other YouTube video that I make. So I'm going to do Apple Devices 4K, that's all fine as it is. If we go to settings we can see H.264 better quality, resolution 3840 by 2160 and all that is fine as it is. Is. So I can just go on to next. I'm going to save this to the internal drive just to the desktop so we don't have to put up with a slower external drive being connected. It will be able to write it straight to the internal. So let's just click next and see. I'm actually going to get a timer up on my Apple Watch just so we can get an accurate measurement. So as soon as I click save, I'm going to start my timer. There we go, it has now started and my timer is on. We need to be keeping a look at the sharing here, but I am now going to cut the camera and I'll come back when there is an update. Okay, so if we look at my timer, it's been going for about three and a half minutes and it's already on 13%. I think that's actually pretty good going. It's now on 14 and it seems to be doing at least 1% per minute which is actually quite good and now my cat is there as well.
So I'm not sure if you can hear this, but the fan has now started to spin a bit quicker. I'll give the machine a quick feel. Yeah, that is getting hot now. That is probably about as hot as my MacBook Pro ever gets, but remember, old machine probably has its original thermal paste on it as well. I really do need to change that at some point. If I keep using this machine, I will change that, but there is no dust in it. I have cleaned that out. And of course these machines do just run hot, but I don't like particularly hot running computers so I might have to think about some sort of way to keep this cooler if this is a viable computer for video editing. But in this about minute and a half since I started recording again, it's already on to 23%. I'm actually very impressed with the speed that this is going at so far. Of course, certain parts of the video have more effects and layers than others, and that will slow it down. But so far, it's done a couple of text layers and some music, and it seems to be going pretty well. My watch is now saying this has been going for about 15 minutes, and our progress is on 49%. So it looks like it is about halfway done so I think this will take about 30 to 40 minutes to complete and I'm absolutely fine with that. If it can do 4K exporting double the length of the video that's fine with me. I don't really need it to be time critical. I always film and edit videos a good few days if not weeks before they go live so the time isn't really a problem for me. So far I'm not seeing any problems. It has been on 49 for maybe a minute or two now, but that might just be a bit in the video where it's got to do quite a troublesome bit with lots of layers. Who knows, but so far, so good. We are now coming up on 26 minutes, and we are on 56%. So it's been taking the last couple of percent quite slowly, but... I'm really not too bothered about that, even if this does take longer to export than my MacBook Pro, it's still more convenient for me to just use a desktop for video editing, and I can always just leave this on doing what it's doing and leave the house. So I'm not too concerned about if it does go really slowly, but it shouldn't take too long. It did the first 50% rather quickly, so let's just see how this goes. 56 minutes, we're getting closer to the hour mark, and we are on 79%. I'm not exactly sure whether we are going to get this finished under an hour. Usually, the progress doesn't get to 100%, it usually stops somewhere in the 80s, so we're still in with a chance, I'm just not too sure. It's now on 88% and that's usually about the percent it's on when it finishes. Now, it's been on 88 for about 5 minutes now, so this second half is definitely taking its time. I was very impressed with the speed from 0 to 50%, but from then it's just been getting slower and slower and if you take a look at my watch it's now been going 1 hour 30 so this is taking a lot longer than I would like it to. Okay it's now finished and it took 1 hour 31 minutes and 40 seconds and the final file is on my desktop so let's take a look at it let's look at the information so it ended up being 3.09 gigabytes. All of that looks to be fine. I'm going to give the video a quick play just to make sure there's no obvious errors in the export. So it seems to have made the video just fine, which is good. Now, my only problem with this is the amount of time that it took to export. Earlier I said that the time wasn't really a problem, but an hour and a half is a little bit silly for a 20 minute video. I'm pretty sure that my MacBook Pro would have done it within 45 minutes. And this thing is extremely hot, even now it's finished, it's still hot enough that it could burn me. My MacBook Pro keeps its fans 
higher for longer while being very very hot this only had its fans on for a short amount of time so maybe it's just thermal throttling and that's making it slow down so maybe at some point I need to experiment with keeping the fans on full blast for the entire time to see if that makes a difference but as standard this thing took 1 hour 31 minutes which I think is a bit too long even for me. I've got quite a lot of patience when it comes to this sort of thing but that is nearly an hour longer than it would have taken my MacBook Pro. Now of course this is a 9 year old machine and I'm sure if you tried to do 4K editing on a 9 year old Windows computer it wouldn't go as well as this. Now the actual editing part was absolutely fine, I had no problems with that. The only issue I have is with the exporting so I'm not really too sure what the verdict is. It can edit 4K and the final file is absolutely fine. The only thing is how long you have to wait for it to make the final file. That's the only thing that I can really think of. It managed to work doing everything I threw at it just as well as my MacBook Pro apart from the final export. So I don't think I will be able to use this to edit my videos because of the simple fact it takes too long to export. I can't really justify that extra time if I've got another machine that can do it quicker. This looks neater on my desk instead of a laptop but ultimately I think the MacBook Pro is better for me. So I think that that is pretty much it for this video. The final answer is yes. The 2012 Mac Mini can edit 4K video, it edits it very, very well indeed, it's just the exporting which takes quite a long time. Now if you found this video interesting, please do subscribe and give it a like, that really does help, but that will now be it for this video. So thank you for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.